Hey guys, um, this will come out in the story, but I'm going to talk about using what you got. <clears throat> so, but I do kind of need to put a little bit of a disclaimer in here. I'm going to use some scriptures too, but this is going to be in the story, but I had some brain strokes and it did kind of, you know, doctor report is not, it's all kind of horrible actually, not good, but God's report's great and awesome. But so, a little challenging sometimes, so if I kind of seem like I'm a little scattered or off the map, I probably might be. I'm trying not to be, but so anyhow, this was a couple years ago. Um, the, 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 I'm going to tell that part of the story in here too a little bit, but not because it's about me, but it just intertwines with it. So a couple years ago, I'm on YouTube and I'm, you know, trying to start doing some stuff on the ministry. I don't even want to do it, but that's what the Lord was told me to do. So I'm like, okay, God, I'm just being obedient. <clears throat> Gives me scriptures to go with it too. But the first couple days, I was where I plugged my computer in. The way it was plugged in and it ran through my desk, I would have a tendency to kind of trip over it when I was getting up on my desk, not noticing it, really. And when I did, it would come unplugged, and it was a 2008 computer, so a couple years ago, it would have made it pretty old, right? I mean, nine years old. Every time i take it in to get it fixed, the guy would laugh at me. Man, most computers work three or four years, a couple years. I'd pay him 50 bucks, he'd clean it up. <clears throat> God no longer in business now, but he would just laugh. But I was like, well, it's still cheaper than me, seemed to be. Just fix it. <clears throat> Clean it up, whatever, get a virus. Windows 7. But, so, I kept coming unplugged, and I was like, Lord, tell me to do YouTube, and man, you know, it's kind of complaining, really. That's what I call them sometimes. I, sometimes we say we're praying, and it's really complaining. Um, Still communication with God, but it's more complaints. <clears throat> and he said, use what you got. Okay, God. I'm going to be obedient. All right, God. I could, could have bought a computer, yes, of course, but I'm technically in the 90s, probably don't even text people. This stuff just kind of goes over my head, so I wouldn't even know what kind to buy for one. And, you know, I did buy one for four hundred dollars. That's part of the story of using what we got. What I got, I bought this about, about a year ago. I only spent four hundred bucks because, to me, I'm not going to use a two thousand dollar computer, even though they look nicer and probably maybe could do a whole lot more stuff. Not for me. That's what I'm using now. A three ninety nine computer. Seems okay to me. I mean, the screen's probably good. My picture's kind of probably lame, but. That's coming. But, <clears throat> so use what you got. So within a couple days, he gives me a scripture. It's in Elijah, 2 Kings 2, 19. Elijah, Elijah, just had got caught up in heaven shortly before that. He started performing miracles. One of them was... He was outside of the walls of Jericho, and they, some of the people in the city came to him. One of the prophets or guys came to, came to him. Just read it. Um, said, man, the city's awesome, kind of. You know, I'm paraphrasing a little bit. <clears throat> but the water's death and barren. The land's barren. Elijah told his servants, he said, go get a bowl and fill it with salt. Put some salt in Fill it with salt. So they did. Right back, he dumped the salt into the water and said, Thus saith the Lord, I'm healing this water. And it's healed to this day. You can drink it to this day. So, and the Lord said, he used what he had. Use what you got. Okay, and then let's fast forward, okay? So, two, six months ago. Actually, there's um, yeah. Let's fast forward it to a year and a half ago. 
No, it's fast. Yeah. Um, sitting in my prayer chair. I've learned to be obedient over this because of the second city, but I won't tell you the whole stories, but he's been giving you random cities. Some of them real random, guys. Some of them made sense. First one was Italy, Texas. I knew where it was, and we went, and he did. everything happened the way the Lord said, and we ministered to who he wanted us to minister to, and it was awesome. The second trip is where I learned the obedience piece for sure. One part of it was go to the post office. It was awesome what happened there. Everything happened the way he said. But the second one was <clears throat> go to the library, find the clerk, ask him for a book on witchcraft. And I'm giving you directions, and your wife's going to be my mouthpiece. And I don't care about the book. Tell the clerk that you don't care about the book. You just want to go to the aisle where the books are. I didn't tell my wife, guys, but we did go. In a little town called Little Elm. Last one was in Pennsylvania. <clears throat> so that's where I learned the obedience because we went there, got there. Long story short, but when I finally got to ask the, 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 the clerk was a lady that we, the, we long story, but God connected us with her. And when I asked her for a book on witchcraft, she said, that doesn't seem strange. And then I said, I don't care about the book, take us to the aisle. But when she took us to the aisle, she started crying and broke down. And her story basically was, she was born again Christian and a couple kids, one was saved, one wasn't. But she was studying her genealogy in the last couple of months. And her granddad, great granddad, uncles, grandmothers were witches and warlocks. And she was worried about a generational curse, crying and pouring her heart out to us. Because she didn't want that curse upon her family and my wife launched into it and we ministered to the to the woman and so today i was like okay god even if it seems goofy crazy off the wall stuff i'm gonna do what you tell me to do just because out of obedience because i didn't tell my wife before it went because a little bit of fear and embarrassment what if i'm wrong all that kind of stuff but so i used what i had you know we had a car we had a little time and not a lot of money, but I mean, that one was close. Pennsylvania was not close. And it cost almost four grand. And it took 14 days. <clears throat> but it happened, everything happened like it was. But one of Pennsylvania, we were in Knoxville at a church. Wrote the first book. <clears throat> you can get them both on Amazon. Just email me, Jesus is alive at, at gmail.com, and I'll, you know, or. Just look on Amazon under my name. But this, I was, he told me to write another book and he gave me the title and told me how to put it, which I got out now. That's the one I really wanted to get. I'm gonna put it on in January for four bucks. I'm gonna keep this video under 15 minutes, I promise. I'm kind of watching the time and I wanna keep these, start getting these shorter. <clears throat> and, and he said, put Jesus in big ball letters. Christ knew the hope of glory. How were his story, were his voice, were his feet? Full of scriptures, guys. A lot of scriptures. 250 some pages and the vast majority of them are scriptures. Because that's what he told me to do. But I intertwined some stories in there too. And I'm not done. I'm revising it now. I'm going to put like the fifth or sixth revision right now. And then put it in after January 1st, wait till January 1st, and then you can get it. It'll be four bucks on Amazon. <clears throat> but it's t it's an encouraging book, guys, because I'm just directional. I'm not even an author. I'm not even, you know, nothing except a child of the king and a watchman. And I'm not going to be ashamed of the gospel. So... Same thing, using what I got. Write this book. Well, I already wrote the first book, and I was sitting there in prayer, and the Lord said, go to Habakkuk too." So he got on me about this for glossing over the scriptures that he's giving me. Because I did. Habakkuk 2 says, find the vision, write it down on tablets. But I took off with find the vision, write it down, make it plain. I, you know, I had my own little version of it, I guess. I told some preacher in town, on, on the journey to Pennsylvania, told him, you know, I got this computer, just got this computer, the one I'm using now, which is another part of this story. 
I'm using what you got. And I'm going to, you know, new, got a battery that works. I'm going to go. My wife and I were going to, part of the trip was a cabin and some time off, but some ministry time mixed in. It was a good and a not, you know, a good, great trip. And it was also some work. Or just, and some great stuff in the ministry. But it was, you know, a little bit tough. So, none of it happened. I didn't get to write, hardly write any of the book. A little disappointed, but when I told this preacher the scripture, because I already wrote the first book, ran with it. Okay, now let's fast forward it to another year. Six months ago, because of the stroke, I couldn't even walk. That's why I went to the doctor, guys. Literally would be walking a lot and, and, and it happened probably at least a dozen times and I mean, I didn't even tell my wife about it because I didn't want to scare her or whatever, but I would just hit the ground. Like my feet were gone. No warning, no nerve, or no pain, no, nothing. Normal, seemingly random event of walking. God, this isn't going to work. What if it happens in church? What if it happens in public? What if it happens at the store? What if it falls in the street in front of a car? You know, I mean, a little bit of fear, but mostly apprehension. But like, man, God, this is this not going to work. I'm going to get hurt myself or kill myself even, you know. It's just kind of like, man, this is not going to work. So I went to the doctor and long story short, they did all the MRIs. And, but it had taken part of my brain that where the balance was and wiped it out pretty much. They, took pictures of it and gray matter, white matter, and just died, whatever. It gave me a perplexed look when I asked him what to do. So it has had some effects on me, guys. And But I'm sitting in my prayer chair, this is a long story short, but God gave me some messages out of it. One of them is broken and contrite spirit. Part of it is... You know, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus because I've used that message. I couldn't walk. <clears throat> and I was crying out to God and said, God, this sucks. But this hand, I got so much closer to him, this side. And I use that message now at the shelter and other places. Through it all, I started singing that song. Through it all, I haven't fell in four months. It's starting to heal my brain, too. I can feel it and see it. The doctor said no, and I'm like, that's not the God I serve. But <clears throat> so six months ago, but OK, let me go back to that through it all. So then that became a message, part of it. I tell people, I'm like, man, through it all, because I literally I had to trust Jesus for every step I took, guys, because I didn't know I was going to have another one. Honestly, I had no, no guarantee of it at all. None. I said I'd get no warning, nothing. It'd just be like walking along and boom, blam, just like that, that quick. So, through it all. But... So then six months ago, I started to get these doctor reports back. Not good. Um, sitting in the garage praying. My wife has a special place out there with a really nice couch that wouldn't fit in our house when we moved in. And so we just left it in the garage. Um, and it's her special place, but I like it too, kind of now. So, I'm, you know, I got there. But I was sitting out there and uh, the Lord started dealing with me and he said, I want you to write some more books. I'm like, okay, God, I'm listening, but you're kind of a funny guy, God. Because at the time, this computer that I'm using right now, as you can see, it works fine. A couple months before, it had only been eight, eight months old, crashed. Lights started blinking, and I just never took it in. Um, and then a couple weeks later, just completely went out. When I sent it in, the technicians at the store, three or four, two or three of them, tore up, broke up, things, motherboard. I'm not a computer guy. It's all toast, pretty much. 
Didn't come on. It wouldn't work. Nothing. Zippo. Not even a noise. Nothing. The lights. Nothing. Sent it off to the manufacturer. Same thing. I can't come in under warranty. What? You did something to it. I didn't do anything to it, guys. It just quit working. You bought garbage from China, probably. And anyhow, it could be a soapbox. Just send it back. I'm a little mad. Get it back. What do I do, God? Started praying over it. Well, I'm sitting there. Took two months. But now here it is. But, but at the time, I'm sitting there in prayer. Just got the computer back. Came on for a couple days. I turned it on after three days. For three days, did what the Lord told me. Came on for a couple days and it quit again. I'm like, Lord, I've just been praying and praying and praying over it. Two months. Works better now than it did before I, before I sent it off. <clears throat> Honestly. <clears throat> it's working right now. I'm doing this YouTube. <clears throat> so... But I was sitting there and it wasn't working at the time in the prayer. It was six months ago. And so I'm sitting there. Lord's telling me to write some more books. I'm like, God, you're kind of a funny guy. You might as well. He told me to write a bunch, guys. I'm a man. That's all another message. The, the amount or the number, too. But... So I'm sitting there, and I was like, you're a really funny guy, God. Like, giving me resources or even, you know, seeing some, you know, movement or some, some things. I said, man, I'm kind of dumb as a box of rocks on the computer. Literally, I'm not knocking myself. I'm just, just not there. Fine with that, but. <clears throat> Using a computer from 2008 with Windows 7. Doesn't work real good, guys, with now today's technology. I mean, try it sometime. You, some of you guys are in the technological field. It's like, man, it's probably, probably comical. Comical even to people that aren't. It's just like... <clears throat> my computer's broke. My other one's broke. Didn't really want have the finances to buy one, and even if I did, I didn't want to. But there was some stuff that was transpiring that I didn't see. But I said, God, you're a real, f you know, I said, I can't walk. <clears throat> My brain is kind of malfunctioning. Short version of it, it still happens some, and it's a little frustrating, but I'm getting through it because of, because of what I'm doing with the computer and stuff, and it is getting better. But <clears throat> went to a doctor the other day and had to fill out some forms, <clears throat> bunches of them. <clears throat> Signed and dated, and a well, bunch of dates on there. Well, he asked me, he said, why'd you put June of 2019 on here? I don't know. So, deeper than that, but it's like, okay, God. But so, <clears throat> that's still, so there's still a few things there, but I'm sitting there, and I tell God, I've got to have my brain gone, bogus computer, Stripping things. I said, you, you're a funny guy, God. You might as well tell me to build a rocket ship here in Dallas. And my neighbors will love it when it launches and burns their house up. Like, you know, I'd be mean, stupid. Let's get... <clears throat> then the reality sunk in. And I looked down, and in my wife's favorite place to pray in front of her couch is a table she made. And there sitting on there was the copy of this book, Jesus Christ in you, the hope of glory. My eyes locked on it. And the Lord said, that didn't exist last year. When I told you to write, it did it. No, God. Don't you think I'm going to help you write these? Yes, God. Use what you got. Back to that same thing. Use what you got. Okay, God. <laughs> he says, go back to Habakkuk 2 and reread it. And I did. Same thing. You got a Bible? Use what you got, guys. What do you have? So, Habakkuk 2, write it down on tablets. Well, two days before, I 
just canceled my direct TV after having it for four, 14 years, probably a long time. I got tired of the garbage on the news, guys. I'll, I'll, that's the only thing I was really watching. I like the History Channel and stuff too, but it's like, I don't know, 130 bucks, I don't really like it. I told my wife, I said, this is how we're gonna pay for a tablet from at and it's $85, you know, it's only gonna save 50 bucks on top of, you know, it just made sense. A tablet, I'm about to buy a tablet, which I did. Then when I bought it, I could talk to the tablet and it writes down what I say. And there's all these books that the Lord's told me to write in the computer, yeah, maybe just not that hard to get. I mean, it's in my documents, like it, it's there. And I can just talk and type way quicker than I know how to do. I don't even know all the technology of it. So it's like, I don't have a brain. Well, no, he's the smartest guy, but I, he's fairly smart. Still am, but I was like, God gave me a better one. They're at and Smarter and greater and faster than me, I guess. I don't know. <clears throat> but it works. I'm using what I got. So, Habakkuk 2. Find the vision, write it down, and put it on tablets. So there you have it. Use what you got. I'm going to end with this, guys. <clears throat> Recently he told me that. And even just today he told me that, too. He told me and added to it before I put this message out. But he's like, a couple days ago, he's like, Use what you got. I'm thinking about, you know, just, and he's like, use what you got. Okay, God. He said, because I have had to for a very long time, even from the beginning of time, he's had to use people. And then today, he was like, I was thinking about that. Well, I had to use people. Okay, David, what did he have? Five smooth stones. Um, Moses. A relationship with the Pharaoh so he could get into the king kingdom, castle. But the Red Sea, all he had was a staff. What did God tell him to do? One of the biggest, not there's a bunch of big miracles, but there's a big one in the church. To the church, Esther. She had her, she had her voice. She had her access to the king. Saved all of Israel, millions of people from dying and perishing, because she was there, and could walk into the king, which not everybody could. I'm sure she still had a lot of apprehension, fear. You know, you didn't just walk in and say, "Hey, dude," you know, tell him, you know, you man, you had to, you know, a lot worse than. Walking into your boss's office, you know, I mean, people were ready to kill you. <clears throat> if the king said, you know, take him out, you were, that's, what, that's what happened. You got took out and killed. <clears throat> so, here's what you got. So, that's what I'm doing, using what I got. And I'm a watchman, and I am telling you guys... Some of these videos, that's like the, the big one. The big one right now is that he's really, really getting on me, not getting on me about, but having you put out there is the storm, the storm that's coming. Some of them are already here. My wife and I are hitting some pretty major storms right now, a couple of them real major. The health one's a pretty, pretty big one too, but I got some other ones, some self-inflicted that I created that are really big, some that other people created that are pretty big. But I already see God's hand in a lot of it, honestly. Some small things and little things and things are starting to, okay, God. And I walked with him long enough to know that through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. So use what you got, guys. Um, whatever it is, I am gonna end with this. This one's getting a little long, so. Um, but check out my other videos, but really contact me, blog with me, email me, share my videos, something. Let's connect a little bit. 
I don't know what it's going to look like, but use what you got. What do you have? What's he telling you to do? And that's why I said that earlier about the one about hearing. He wants to. He wants the church to hear what the Spirit is saying to the Lord. If he's telling you to be his voice, be his voice. If he's telling you to be his feet, be his feet. If he's telling you to do something, do it. Pray about it, of course, first. But So use what you got. What do you got? And what do you want you to do? So, love you guys. Um, tried really hard not to make this long, but here it is. Love you.